Hi everyone, Augie here, and today I am going to review my experience with AWA 2021. I've been to many events in quite the dealer's room this year. Both the Super Happy Fun Time Sale, the Swap Meet, and the regular dealer's room, as well as some panels, met a lot of cosplayers, and of course, if you go to AWA, the AMV contest and stuff like that. So let's begin with the first topic. So why AWA? Back in high school, or high school and middle school, AWA was this big thing that everyone talked about. It was like some sort of grandeur event that you need to go to. So through peer pressure, interest, and finally being able to go on my own because I can drive. I had the preset of rose-colored glasses coming into it and I'm actually enjoying it quite well. So every year around AWA time, I make sure that I can take off and go to it. Typically enjoy the experience that I've had going to this convention. Meeting friends, discovering new shows, getting shows, and overall just having a good time, even if it's just chilling in the room. Also, over the years, I don't do this, but a lot of people have been claiming this year that the beer situation for the hotel has been superb. However, getting a meal from them is kind of hard to get the room service, so, yeah, well. Sugar, spice, fatality thrice. These are the whoop-ass girls. Finish him. AWA takes place in the Marriott Renaissance Galleria Hotel, which is in Atlanta, Georgia. So here's a quick spin of what this place looks like, starting with the room, then the full fast forward motion of the whole hotel space. All right, here's the front of the hotel. Look how spiffy. Okay, taking a look around as I check out. There's the sign, entrance, elevators, let's proceed. You can see the hustle and bustle of the con as it early begins, or well, uh, on this uh, Friday night when I chose to record. See the circle around, see the floor. All right, going up here to take a peek at what the room looks like. Yeah, there you go. That used to be a downward slanted movie theater. Going through, turn right here, see the green room. Going down the hall, this is another entrance into the mall area for the convention. Going through, seeing all the shops that they have through normal business hours. There's a gift shop. And let's turn down this hall over here just to see what it's like. Sadly, to our right is the theater that they used to have. It used to be an actual theater you can go to. I'm not sure if they have all the seating in there or not, but it would be nice to use for video rooms, but I'm not sure what the accommodations are inside the movie theater. All right, so back back to where we were at the beginning of the hall, going down. I want to see the busy hustle and bustle of where the subway that's 24 hour the opened throughout the convention. See the elevators, see some stores, a barber shop. Right over there, the Big Chow Bowl, that is a buffet that cooked to order hibachi pretty much. All right, let's go through over here. Elevator entrance of the bottom floor, the escalators, seeing all the other businesses, people passing by. Let's take a look under down this last hallway. And it looks like it's closed over here. 
So, back over here. And going up the escalator. Alright. There you go. Alright, down through here, we want to see what the panel rooms look like. I peek into five there. All right. Onward. That's the bathrooms. And this is the top. This is the upper entrance to this main area. Right here we see the main events and take a circle at what schedule we can possibly read that take place here. Cruising along. Pass the COVID testing, pass the information booth. The dealer's hall took a sneak peek before they can set it all up. Papa John's, which is not worth your time. Chick-fil-A is Chick-fil-A. All these other tables that you see, not the round ones, but the longer ones, that's where the other conventions will come and advertise. Free tables, free places to sit, so you sit down and chill, pretty much. Another entrance into this place, seeing all the banners here. And if you go this way, this leads to the Cumberland Mall. That's where the video game room was, or is. That's where the video game room is. I'm surprised they barricade this other way to the stairs. Oh well. Down through here you have one of the openings to the well, openings to the game room and also one of the larger panel rooms. Alright, let's go down the hall from the main events. This is where the line would happen. One panel room, cruising along. Seeing the upper area from where you go up the stairs and escalator from the bottom area. Walking towards the anime music theater or AMV room and a gander across. Alright, this is what the room would look like. If you got one of the hotel rooms, I got a one bed this time. And for the badge this year, this is how it looked like with its default lanyard, or at least the first run of the lanyards. Okay, if you can see this, I just went to the short hop right here to there for pre-order pre-ridge. And way over here is the registration line. So, uh, if that was you, we register. Line continues there to over here, to over here, to all the way around to there. Not worth waiting for the last minute. But. I'll go over this next bit a little bit more specific later, but here are my experiences with this year's Super Happy Fun Time sale the swap meet showing the line then also what uh gorilla footage i can get of the swap meet itself as well as what i got this is where the line is trying to settle 
and gradually moves to how ridiculous this is for Lon. Getting mixed up with the pre reg. All right, look over here. We have an interesting red box. Right, let's see what this is. What's this? Okay, okay. Oh, sure. This is interesting. I didn't expect the box to be kind of complete for the yokai stuff, yokai watch stuff. So I didn't get it, but this is pretty cool. All right, let me see them DVDs. Okay, over here, a bunch of manga. Over here, ah, DVDs and. They're all common and I already have them. Oh well. There's one over here. Let's see. Manga that. Sorry, I'm doing best here. This is $5. Yeah, it doesn't really help. Most of these are $5. Over here, what little stuff that they have, I either have or was not interested. Over here, ooh. Thank you, you too. Hello. How much are the DVDs? Uh, DVDs are $5 each, but if you okay. want to get more than one, I'll take you Okay. Okay, this is impressive, but all these are common and I already have. I don't want roughnecks. Okay, zoom, 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 buzz, buzz, buzz like a bee. Let me get over there so I can see. Yeah, Mario board game DVDs. Okay, now I can see stuff, and it's stuff I already have. Okay. Not the square box for the Pokemon trading card game. At least you can with a CD. I already have those. And over here, once again, I already have those as well, or at least a form of that, either DVD or VHS. It's interesting to see all this. All right, I... Oh, let's buy this. All right, PSP game. Switch, PSP. Project for Sakura, some PlayStation 3, Blast Blue. And, oh, well, I already have that. I forgot what it's called. And there is volume one of Eureka 7. Or at least the complete collection. Empty booth. Move on over to this right here. Let me over. Let me see. What do they have? It is crowded. They're finally here. And it's stuff I already have. Okay, move on. It's weird away awesome. This guy over here, if I can get to him. I did purchase some stuff from him. Yeah, behind the t-shirt guy. Yeah, the guy in red. I did purchase some stuff from him, but I didn't get the initial reaction recorded. So, so be it. I'll talk about that soon. And yeah, this is pretty much how big the space is for this swap meet. Sadly, it's not as good as the 2018. This is kind of like an... This is kind of like a repeat of 2019, but same sellers trying to just reduce what stock that they have. Zoom in to find the DVDs our boys love. How much are your DVDs? Uh, the DVD prices vary. Um, okay. Is there one you're looking at? Uh, so far, these two. What are the Lucky Stars again? Yeah, three bucks for the Lucky Stars each. Okay. Uh, can you lift those up? Sorry. <laughs> oh, it really is Happy Days. It is Happy Days. <laughs> okay. How much for the angelic layer? Angelic layer? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
should have had Sakamoto more up. <laughs> uh, he got all the way to the bottom. I swear he was on top at the beginning. Okay. What, what can that, you do about him? <laughs> huh? uh, imagine an inverse Beavis and Butthead. No, no, no. I mean, I've seen it. I've oh, read, okay. I love the manga. I'm just saying, what can you do? He's, what, he worked way to the bottom. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you just moves. This was a fun show, but there's an OAV that was released by ADV Films that was technically much more fun than the TV series, but <laughs> for some reason they just didn't include it. Uh, yeah, I'll take three for these, or three each. Dang, looks like you did pretty good tonight. Uh, yeah, I mean, pay for the table, pay for the What did Augie get? Okay, from the Super Happy Fun Sale, I got all of these for like, essentially, buy four, get one free with how I worked out the deal. But originally, this was like 50, and got this for 10, so there you go. Buy four, get one free, yeah. And lastly, from the Super Happy Fun Sale, I scored volume three and five of Lucky Star Special Edition covers which they did sell these individually on the Bandai Entertainment Store. However, these were either sold through the store or came with the special editions. Volume 6 does not have one to my knowledge. However, these were $3 each, so not bad. Okay, so we're going to look at the dealer's room and gorilla footage, and also maybe there might be an interview or so within it somewhere. However, I'm not going to look at it. There are, Sally. Why? I can't move to point A to point B without bumping shoulders into people. So seeing the backs of people's shirts is not going to be entertaining. So with that, let's check out the dealer's room and what I got right after. All right, entering the dealer's room. And obviously fast forwarded because you don't want to feel like you've walked this. You want to see what it's all about. And so far, shirts, figures, and cosplayability. And wall scrolls. All right, trying to zoom past here. Shirt place. Wall scrolls. And this guy usually has wall scrolls and food. Across the crowded ways. All right, the discotheque booth. I'll get to them much better later. But that is where they are, conveniently towards the entrance for once. Wood running stuff. Food, shirts, comic books. Apologize for the real camera work slash footage. I am learning and it's pretty obvious that we can see the top of the showroom floor as well as the products. Flushes and flushes and Figmas and plushies and manga here and manga there, shirts there and everywhere. A strange empty space which I'll use later. Cards, manga, all sorts of stuff. Place. More shirts. Creative Pokemon Terrarium. It's not even bad. Shirts, shirts. Shirts. Should have bought some from that company. More shirts. Alright, so we passed. Aside from those who are licensed vendors, we'll pass to that they sell anime and manga. 
but usually it's like in a rough condition if you get there anime. Granted, they're at every anime convention exhibit. Sometimes you can find deals there, sometimes you just get weak people. But that's their lifestyle and what they chose, so if you can find something cool, if you can't, don't worry. There's plenty of other people out there selling. One thing that I'm missing from the dealer's hall is Japanime games. I really like the game dealer and, well, wish they were here. Yeah, I'm approaching Media Blasters, but the angle is too high. However, they have a very, very short booth this year. like the figures and stuff that you see while passing. Granted, if you buy them or not, that's one story, but just knowing that they're theirs and comfortable for you. Shorts and shorts and shorts. Now, and this, we are approaching the end of the tour. However, we have to take a sweet look at that widow that we passed by. There we go. Better shot to get of this grid array right here, which has some pretty awesome imports inside, especially music and imported anime. All right, so here's the discotheque booth in its full glory. All their titles with some files that they that they have in their next game to sell well or could be possible future licenses. Never know. Girls work in the booth I always enjoy talking to. They're very pleasant people and customer satisfaction at its best. All right, the cars, the cars, the cars. We have seen every show that the cars have had on. Lit styles that I always like looking at these cars in the convention. Now I forgot what you call this, but just seeing them decked out clean and well of shows that you know or video game series. Alright, another motorcycle. Alright, so we have one hero academia. Although, I can't tell what that one is. I think it's just itself. This one is the Fully Fully Car. Hey there. Two Hero Academia Car. On this side. And a video game I don't play. Overwatch thing. Right here, Madness and Company. You can see the, their booth in amazing style, and also, here is an interview with him. So, uh, what's the name of your company? So, we're Madness and Company. Uh, it's a merchandise and apparel line started by my wife and I. I'm Kenneth, and uh, she's in the age of Fowler. Uh, we sell we sell merchandise and apparel, but technically we sell hype and nostalgia. It's a lot of old school comic book art, video games, just that entire niche. What makes your product different from your competitors? Mm, I would have to say, I feel like you can go anywhere to get a Goku shirt or a Dragon Ball Z or, or Gundam shirt or Naruto shirt. So we kind of wanted to do something else a bit different. So a lot of the, the designs are kind of an amalgamation of things. So you might see Gamabunta's face from Naruto that becomes like the start of a bunch of fighting frogs. Or we might do a ninja that has a Kill Bill outfit and that becomes something else. So it's like, 
it isn't foreign things, oh, but yeah. it's a connection of things that I think we've all consumed from pop culture and put together in like a new product. So I think having something different really, really helps us stand out. Do you like anime or Asian live actions? What got you started and what's your favorite? Oh man, that's a great question. Um, yes and yes. Uh, it's funny because when I go back and think of my childhood, the things that were really like, it hit me when I was really impressionable was definitely uh, definitely Naruto, definitely Dragon Ball Z. You know, you only when you're a kid and you see somebody knock somebody through a mountain, it's like, whoa, what is that? What is going on? Is that, or, or, or I think the first martial art film I watched, which when I was younger, obviously shows my time, but uh, was Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Now, I've gone back and watched the, you know, all the old flicks, but like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon for me, I saw people fighting on trees. I was like, oh, what is going? Like those kind of things just really made me want to learn more and see more about that medium. And it's like mixing that with like Wu-Tang and a lot of hip hop culture as well. All that kind of creates its own subculture. And I think kind of staying on that vein really helps us a lot. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you very much. Good thank luck you. on your venture. And Thanks, I like your designs, man. So. Appreciate it, man. Happy to be here. Thanks for checking <laughs> us out, for sure. Oh, be easy. Peace out, man. See ya. <laughs> what did Doggy get? Oh boy, did I get a lot of stuff from the Madness Company. Expect a review in the near future. From the dealer's room, these are the items that I'm going to give as gifts. Starting from this way to that way, these are the anime that I got from the dealer's room. I have these two already, but I got them again because of style and a different, uh, well, set. I believe this DNA Angel set corrects a lot of audio issues from the previous ADV sets. Also to point out the $30 price tag for the Blu-ray 5 centimeters per second, which sadly it's out of print, but that's the price it should be. Here are the live actions that I got. This one is going to have a Fathom Events pretty soon, but this is what I got for me for Asian live action. And a miscellaneous item I got for myself is The Tick, the Disney release that doesn't include all of the episodes, but you know, good enough until someone else releases a better version. I think I've noticed through the dealer's room from 2014 till now, is used to we would have Funimation, which is FYA in disguise, Sentai Filmworks, even though they normally would have a Sentai sale before the con began. Crunchyroll and a High Dive booth, even though this place is sponsored by High Dive, it doesn't show that they're there this time. I'm not sure what's going on. I hear from people that the con is shrinking, even though Battle rooms are filled up and they got, they make the means of the venue. So I don't know what's going on. I was lucky to see a form of Media Blasters and Discotech as always, but eh, who knows? Kind of a interesting tidbit with the vendors. Along with all that stuff that I got from the dealer's room, I also interacted with two voice actresses. Check it out. Tiffany Grant is always an enjoyable meeting with her. I usually show her like her latest roles that she has done on Blu-ray and every time I show it to her, it's like giving a young child a puppy. She is just so delighted and I wish I had that recorded, but here's what I do have recorded for the video. Go. And after meeting Miss Tiffany Grant, I was able to get these three items signed. Obviously, Razafan with her character, and an indie film that she starred in called Laughing Boy. Go. All right, Justin, I see you chose violence today, but that's okay. We're going to go straight into it. Darkness beyond twilight, crimson beyond blood that flows. Buried in the stream of time is where our power grows. I pledge myself to conquer all the foes who stand before the mighty gift bestowed in our unworthy hands. Let the fools who stand before us be destroyed by the power you and I possess. A dragon! Uh, okay, so, so nothing exploded, but um, you know, uh, that just means, you know, maybe I need a sandwich. I haven't lost my touch. <laughs> Have I lost my touch, Justin? Game shows. You like them? I do too. And so does this convention because there were either five or more slots on the schedule for <laughs> some sort of anime Jeopardy. So the one I went to didn't say Jeopardy. It was Love Live Game Show. Okay, let's see what this is all about. So the first game they start off with is Jeopardy. Then it was Price is Right. 
After that was two versions of name that tune. Either name the seiyu or character, then it was name the concert it was in or some variant of that. Then the last one before I headed out was some Nickelodeon game show that I'm going to insert in post where you watch the screen and you see a clip of something, then they ask specific details of that clip as you watch. So kind of a very uh, comprehensive exercise. Oh well, apparently, I'm pretty sure that they did not get Grego's apps to do this, so I think they kind of made their own, which is totally cool. Grego's game show out. If you don't know what that is, I'll make a video about that later. So when I was, I felt like how they ran it was very fair. It was very lenient. And I was a contestant on the Price is Right for it, which you only have one shot, four different people. And their rules are a little different from usual because you have, the Price is Right, you have the set price and below to get on the showcase. For this one, they have the set price and your guess has to be the closest to it, which luckily for me, I won. What did I win? This right here. Ooh, look at that. Bad habit. So what exactly is this? Why, well, depending on you, and I believe it is this design, it's either a tissue or disposable glove holder box. When I picked the prize out of the box, I thought it was a model, who knew? But it's still cool that I won something on the Price is Right uh, Anime Con Edition. Oh well, I had fun and it was a joy to watch. Time to give her a bonk on the head. Something I need to show you in brief clips. If you stay at the Con Hotel, or if you walk through the lobby full of people dancing, why? because there are DJ parties throughout the whole convention and they typically end around five, six, just in the morning. But through the whole day till that time of night when they need to do the whole hush hush for people to sleep, they are having a dance party, all sorts of funky chicken stuff, as well as you go out there and take pictures of the cosplayers, which is awesome. So here's a little Clips of the madness to be told. It would be a crime not to say this, but during Saturday night, there was one elevator out of the five for the main con hotel that stopped. Well, it's fine if it stopped. You get the Jaws of Lice emergency team, you get the people out, that's fine. However, what makes this stand out even more is those poor people stuck in the elevator were there for an hour and a half. I'm not going to show the video of them being stuck there, but oh my god, I, mean, I can imagine how scared or angry they might have been. Yeah, well, they're out. To my knowledge, people were safe, so there you go. Just an odd quirk for people. Go, go, Zipele! Go, 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 go. Speaking of the elevators, out of the five elevators, I try to get most of the designs captured. So here's my attempt of getting the few that I got captured. One. Two. Three, four, where they got stuck. Places to eat. Typically you get tired of like the same old subway that's 24 hours or convention food like the Papa John's pizza that's like a cracker crust. It's just not worth your $9 of money. So luckily the Cumberland Mall is just right outside the door with two to three places I like to eat, so check it out. All right, approaching Buffalo Wild Wings and the Cheesecake Factory, inside the Cheesecake Factory. What I got from the Cheesecake Factory, a French dip, baby. All right, after the enjoyable Cheesecake Factory, I mosey on over here with more moseying. 
and I pick up the pace. Yeah, look, whoa, whoa, you, there's a carry out. There's an entrance, but not the entrance. But in red lights, we see. Magiana's Little Italy. Inside the waiting area. I ate at the bar one night and all of the ravioli is gone. Here's the main entrance where I have a delectable steak and small pasta. And as we turn our head from the hotel, we see a Starbucks. Breakfast that morning is a large strawberry frap, egg and bacon, English muffin and spinach with cheese souffle the review of the con overall i thought it was decent for people coming back from what we've been through since we skipped last year however it wasn't set up like 2019. i can understand that there was a lack of volunteers from before because of the whole herd immunity that people want to achieve however it was kind of awkward that some spaces did get bigger rooms which were nice but other places and panels was kind of awkward how they would have smaller rooms due to the content so a lot of people would not be able to get into those certain panels what can you do it was sort of awkward not having as much video rooms this time around but they made more panel rooms. One of my bigger complaints would have to go back to the happy, super happy fun time cell, swap meet. My biggest complaint about that is the line. They wanted to start the line an hour before where you have a whole day of lack of programming. So what do you do? You just mangle around the area while the con and staff like yell, Try to get people out of the way so we can get through to move the stuff. The convention staff can move their equipment and stuff out of the way, which is perfectly fine, but you should be able to like, oh, I don't know, create a simple line to go to the swap meet. I mean, if you can line up for Best Buy to wait for that morning release of a game, why not do that in the simplest of forms? 2019, lined up in the hallway and maneuver across the mall area, which made sense because it's just a big old line and you don't have to confuse that line with the registration line. I don't know what happened. I don't know what was going on. I just assumed less volunteers, less sleep, and the crankiest of females to volunteer. My God, there was no reason to act like that. And I think they wanted to do what they want rather than do something logically or proper logistic. So instead of having it lined from the hallway to enter the area where you pre-register to enter the swap meet, instead they want you to line up in a squiggle squirm fashion to confuse one conga line with another conga line, if you will. So registration lines were getting confused with the swap meet lines. I, I don't get what's going on there. Felt like that could have been handled better. And the longer lines suggested, granted there's more than one way to have a line for this. You would just have one person just go down and make sure no one's standing or sitting in a spot that the convention workers can move through, fire exits could be exited. It, Seems very less maintenance than what in the world they were thinking with this one. So, yeah. One other thing I had an issue with was, I was trying to get a proper schedule on the app. What do, you, what do I mean by that? Update to the new app, which they had simple instructions to get, which was awesome. Kudos for you for the simple action of that. However, while scrolling through the agenda, unless there's something I was missing, not everything was listed in front of every door if you will. Like, let's go to a video room. I would go to a video room and I would see their tracks, but I would see more tracks on the paper for the video room than what's on the app. And on the last day, I would try to match up times for stuff. And it was like way off. The paper on the room said one thing, the app said the other thing. I waited for a line for Lisa and the paper said 1245. While the 
app said 1.30. However, it was updated that it would be at two o'clock, perfectly fine. I was the first one in line. I'm not gonna complain anything. I had a game to play and there was not much to do, but it was like strange miscommunication. I'm not sure how to correct that, but oh uh, well. So funnier things that the con can't control, but the venue did. If you looked at some of the panel rooms, like under the double folded sheets, and you see the table, you can tell what equipment's like stored out in the garage out back where it's not, where it doesn't have proper air conditioning. You see it like crumbled. The tables are crumbled and you're joking with the other person beside you that they did the double layer of blanket on top so no one gets a splinter. So odd quirks like that was kind of, the con can't control, but it's kind of funny to, to run across with other people while waiting for a panel to start. So overall, I liked my experience at AWA 2021. It's not the same as the setup for 2014 to 2019. I'm okay with them setting up something different, but I can see them, if they have the full capacity of volunteers to kind of work, maybe go back to what you had before and kind of work it in with new ideas. Other than that, I had fun. I don't really have a complaint about it. You'll be sorry, punk! I got the last one! Leave me alone! So due to COVID, there was a lot of lack of panelists and volunteers. For the panelists, I mentioned the South Carolina people didn't show up. But however, there's one I want to point out is typical Manime panel. This is a panel that goes through and shows stuff like Go Go 13, Fist the North Star, Baki the Grappler. I would hope they put a uh, Hajimoto Ippo, but the main complaint me and other people will say after their panel is done is, where is Sidney Hunter? We want that Ryu Saiba in there because he is the manliest of men. Okay, so for panels, there were not that many this time around. So the few that I went to were the do's and don'ts of being a voice actor, how to YouTube with Kyle Hales, the wide world of Initial D, an informative panel. This was hosted by Dustin of the AOY podcast. And for some reason, we had two panels back to back of the same topic of American live action anime, which gave the same detail, just a different presentation. With the panels I've been to, the first two I've listed, the do's and don'ts of voice acting and YouTubing with a voice actor, were very informative and pretty much friendlier to those who have not had their first job yet. So there was some pretty good information from that or catered to the teenagers, which is perfectly fine. Good PR for their part, but a very informative. The wide world of Initial D was fun. It was informative, learned about the show, the different processes the show's been through, the manga that was brought out to the US, and many, many details of the music in that sweet, awesome arcade cabinet. Thank you, Dustin, for that. So one issue for some of the panels I tried to go to, which was, the bad anime dubbing panel and the WTF anime. The lines exceeded the room that it was going to, which is fine. And I was okay with it because of the people working it told me ahead of time, you're probably not gonna get in, you can wait, but you could be doing something else. With that in mind, they approached it, or at least what I've seen or what was done to me they're very professional, polite, and courteous, which I am totally cool with that. The Totally Lame panel is always a joy to go see, hosted by Hat Doc Same. And throughout the panel, he made one mistake, and that was calling Ninja Robots being owned by Media Blasters. Ah! <laughs> They're owned by Disco Tech, which, which honestly, throughout the day, traveling there somewhat getting sleep that night and the time of day that it was which was almost towards midnight i can understand being very tired and making the slip up i'd probably do it myself but hey look i'm right there in a the picture after that was anime hell making a panel which is just anime hell making a panel then midnight madness a random assortment of a bridge series throughout the history of awa which had some classics like 
Combatler V, Sailor Moon, and many more from that night. So one thing I haven't shown that every con has is the cosplayers. And I'm gonna end with this cosplay parade, if you will. So with that, check it out and see you next time. guys thank you for watching please remember to like subscribe ring the bell comment below watch my playlists share with your friends follow my social medias ring that bell and i'll have more to come later thank you for watching